Welcome to Prophecy Countdown with author and pastor Kenneth Baer. Join us every week for the latest updates on what the Bible has to say about the events, the characters, and prophetic signs of the return of Jesus Christ and His coming kingdom. Make sure you not only subscribe, but like your favorite episodes and share it with your friends. Now, on with the broadcast. Welcome to Prophecy Countdown. I'm Pastor Ken, and the title of my message today is number 397, Workers in the Vineyard. And we'll be looking at the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. Um, as I've mentioned a number of times, we, we love answering your questions. We love receiving uh, your email and uh, your questions about anything regarding theology or our topics. Uh, perhaps you have an idea for one of our Wednesday updates on Prophecy Update. Uh, you can email us at prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. Now, today is our Sunday message, and it premieres at 1 p.m. We also have have a Wednesday message. Uh, it's always prophecy related. It updates at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays. Um, I also have a book about prophecy. We've been running a trailer on many of our videos and our podcast for the last few months. The name of the book is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. Um, it's uh, published by Zulon. It's available on uh, Amazon and on Kindle as well. Uh, go ahead and get yourself a copy. I'm sure you'll be blessed. So let's get started today. Uh, we're in, our topic is number 397, the workers in the vineyard. You know, on Sundays, we're traveling through the Gospel of Matthew, and we go through the uh, book of the Bible chapter by chapter and verse by verse. It's the way we've, we've been doing it for years. The study actually began at a church I was pastoring in Celebration, Florida, back in September of 2022, coming up on two years. So yes, it, it takes a while. If you approach the Word of God seriously, you are going to spend some serious time in the Word of God. Um, so again, we're in chapter 20 in the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, the context is this, as Jesus is now approaching the end of his earthly ministry. And Jesus is keenly aware of the trials and the sufferings that await him. He has already told his disciples no less than three times in this gospel alone uh, that he would be going to Jerusalem and that he would die. Um, betrayal, trial, and the cross are on the horizon for him. Yet even with the weight of the impending sacrifice, Jesus remains focused on teaching his followers, and that, that's us by extension, uh, about the kingdom of God. He wants us to understand the nature of God's kingdom and the inclusivity that will mark its coming. Now, in this passage, Jesus addresses the unique position that the Jewish people have held as God's chosen people. You know, for centuries, they've been the primary recipients uh, of God's blessing and God's revelation through his prophets. However, as Jesus is preparing his followers for a profound shift, the kingdom of God is about to be opened uh, to all people, uh, all of the people that were not part of the original covenant. Now, through this parable of the laborers in the, in the vineyard, Jesus illustrates this radical inclusivity and the generosity of God's grace. So reading from the Gospel of Matthew, this is, in, this is the uh, New International Version today, uh, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into the vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right uh, so they went. He went out again around noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Uh, because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. So when evening came, the owner of the vineyard came, uh, called to the foreman, call the workers and pay them the wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when they came to, who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. 
Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered and said to them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do, what, to do what I want to do with my own money? Or are you being envious because I am being generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Now this, this, teaching, this teaching today is a parable. This is the primary way that Jesus taught as these parables are stories and these stories are pictures. And, and pictures can tell a story across languages, across cultures, and across time. The parable is about a vineyard. Now, a vineyard is a common agricultural feature in the land of Israel, as it is in many places. Vineyards are the way that grapes grow. And now, grapes can grow in the wild, but they thrive when workers are present in the vineyard. The parable begins with a, a simile. Uh, the parable says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers in the vineyard. Now notice as Jesus is teaching on the kingdom of heaven, Jesus is comparing two different things, the kingdom of heaven and a simple vineyard. The Jews that were listening to Jesus teach would immediately understand this connection. The image of the vineyard is used frequently throughout the Bible, and the Jews were used to this type of, of understanding. Uh, the vineyard symbolizes the people of God or Israel or the kingdom of God. For example, uh, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah chapter 5 writes this, I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delights in. You know, parables typically have a principle or a primary meaning, and they can have many applications. This is one of the things I teach about parables. You want to try to get to understand the primary meanings. For example, in the parable of the prodigal son, we see the worth of a son returning home and learning his lesson. However, the primary meaning of the parable of the prodigal son is the everlasting love of the father. This is about the kingdom of God and the love of God who is the father. If you don't get that, you really don't get the parable. So turning to this parable of the workers in the vineyard, who all receive the same wage, one denarius, let's get to the primary meaning of this parable. The primary message of the parable of the workers in the vineyard is the radical nature of God's grace and the inclusivity of the kingdom of heaven. You know, Jesus uses this parable at the end of his ministry to, to illustrate that God's grace and generosity are not limited by human concepts of fairness and merit. The landowner's decision to pay all the workers the same wage, regardless of how long they had labored in the vineyard, symbolizes God's sovereign right to extend his grace to all, regardless of their past or, or when they came uh, to faith. The parable reminds us that God's ways are, are not our ways and that his grace is unmerited and sovereignly given. One important application is to accept God's generosity. One application is to avoid envy when you see others receiving blessings or others uh, getting more benefits than you are uh, when, you, when you find others chosen to do something that you feel you're qualified for or that uh, doing something that you don't feel they deserve. Uh, these are great applications, but it's not the primary message. You see, the context here is key. Remember, Jesus' earthly ministry is nearing its end. The Jewish people who have been the primary recipients of God's revelation will likely reject, uh, will largely reject Jesus' message. They will reject the coming kingdom. They've been laboring with God for, for 2,000 years. However, God's grace will be extended to the newcomers, the Gentiles, symbolizing the laborers hired late in the day. You know, Jesus is giving this teaching and as he's giving this teaching, 
he knows that in less than a week he will be rejected by his own and he'll die on the cross. And, and less than a generation, less than 40 years from this time that Jesus is giving this teaching, the temple and the city of Jerusalem will be destroyed by the Roman general Titus. The Jewish people will face dispersion through Europe, through Africa and Asia, and later to the Americas and what we know as the great diaspora. What happens to the vineyard? Well, the kingdom of God will be fully established and the workers in the vineyard will be ultimately, but not exclusively, Gentile. Jesus is teaching in this parable the message that the kingdom of God is for all people, the Jews as well as the Gentile. The concluding verse of the parable and the labors of the vineyard encapsulates a profound and often challenging principle in the kingdom of God. Jesus says the last will be first and the first will be last. This statement carries multiple layers of meaning, particularly in the context of the Jew versus the Gentile or the law versus grace and the establishment of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. The Jewish people as descendants of Abraham and the recipients of the law given by Moses have held a unique and privileged position in God's plan. They were the first to receive God's covenant and the promises of God. However, with the coming of Jesus and now the spread of the gospel, the Gentiles who were, con who were traditionally considered last in terms of receiving God's revelation are now included in the kingdom of God. Jesus' statement signifies a reversal of roles where those that were first, the Jews, and those that were last, the Gentiles, are now equal. They're equal participants in God's grace and kingdom. Now, this does not imply, as the church often had implied, uh, that the Jews were rejected. Not at all. It highlights the inclusivity of God's grace. God pro God's promises to bless all the nations through Abraham, that's in Genesis 12, is being fulfilled. The early church, predominantly Gentile, exemplifies this inclusion and the breaking down of barriers between Jew and Gentile. Now, you know, the law given through Moses was central to the Jewish identity and religious practice. It defined their relationships with God. It set the Jews apart uh, as his people. However, Jesus often taught that the law, that, that through the law, it was impossible to achieve righteousness through human effort alone. Remember, I think it was just last Sunday that, we, that Jesus said, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Jesus' ministry emphasized that salvation is not earned by adherence to the law, but salvation is a, a gift of God through God's grace and through faith in Jesus Christ. My friends, understand the message of this parable. Many will miss it, and this is what Jesus said about parables, that to some it has been given to know the underst and understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said. Understand the message of this parable. The kingdom of God is established not through birthright or legal adherence to a law, but through the death, the resurrection, and the soon second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection opened the way for all people, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their background, regardless of their sinfulness, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' second coming will consummate his kingdom. It'll bring full restoration and the fulfillment of all of God's promises. In the second coming of Jesus Christ, the Jews, and the land of Israel will again be front and center in the vineyard. The promises made to the descendants of Abraham will all be fulfilled in the millennium. We know it as the millennium. It's, it's mentioned 11 times in the book of Revelation. And we, as the followers of Jesus Christ, will be right there with them, ruling and reigning in our glorified bodies with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's go ahead and pray. So, Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity here to be able to take a look at it. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. 
Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.